Okay, guys, hey, uh, Bryce and I are back at it today. Hopefully we have a great shooting workout here. Um, yesterday, I took the day off yesterday and went fly fishing. It's my favorite thing to do besides shooting. <laughs> and I drove about three hours down to the southwest part of the state. Um, and, you know, I had a friend, 12 friend I was going, and he's like, yeah, that's crazy. Why would you drive three hours? For me, it's totally worth it because it's the best fly fishing for trout in the state. And, yeah, there's, there's other fishing around here, but... For me, it's totally worth three hours there, three hours back all in one day. Um, what's it worth for you as far as a shooter? Is it worth getting up in the mornings and shooting before school? I used to do that. Is it worth staying after practice? Is it worth 500 shots a day at a minimum? What, what's worth it, <coughs> excuse me, what's worth it for you? The people that put in that extra time, that extra energy, that extra effort, it usually pays off. It paid off for me. I had a great day fishing. There was nobody around. I saw a deer, a coyote, and an eagle, and no people. So it was a great day for me. So our shooting workout today, <clears throat> we've got a little bit different today. We're going to do some spin moves. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to do some spin moves. And I'm going to kind of add some higher level things. So I might add some fadeaways. I might twist my body a little bit. Um, I think those are great things as you get older. For a, you know, Bryce is in seventh grade, probably not fading away yet. Um, but as you get older, you need to be able to add those things if you're going to be a real scorer, real shooter. So I'll add a few of those things. Bryce will kind of do things at normal. We're going to start with, we already did our warm up here. Make sure you get some sort of shooting warm up in. We've been here for a while. We're going to do flip outs and we're going to turn to the middle. We're going to do it from the elbow. Feel free to do it from wherever you want. But we're going to turn to the middle and then just rise up in a shot. It looks really simple and it happens a hundred times in a game. But how many times do we actually practice something like this? We always want to do the, the fancier, the harder, the things that James Harden does. How about just catching the ball, turn it around, and if you're open, shoot it. <laughs> it's a lot easier. So, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to catch on two feet, turn to the middle, and just rise up and shoot. We want to make sure our, our footwork is great. We want to get that shooting foot. I like to teach toe to arch. Your shooting foot should be slightly ahead of your non-shooting foot. All right, so we're going five minutes. Here we go. <coughs> excuse me.
start adding some fadeaways now this last minute. Like I said, that you know you don't need to fade away. If you don't need to fade away, don't do it. It just makes the shot harder. But as you get older, you start and, and better. Defense is better. The best player on the other team's guarding you. They're tall, they're long, they're more athletic than you. You gotta figure out ways to still get off a good shot, and then you gotta practice them. Now, you don't just show up and do those last six shots I took there with never working on it. <laughs> I think that's what Michael Jordan did when he took his time off in baseball, for baseball, and um, he came back, he added that fadeaway, it was unstoppable. It was unstoppable and it was, it was kind of added to his game, he didn't really use it a ton in his first run with the Bulls, and then that second run of three championships, it was just unguardable. So keep adding things to your game as you get older and better. All right, now we're gonna spin and shoot. We're gonna start with a live dribble. We're gonna go kind of towards the middle again, go wherever you want with this at home. We're gonna to go towards the middle. We're gonna take our last dribble, cut our defender off, hold the ball up. So we're gonna spin, no dribble I call it. Spin, I don't take another dribble after the spin. We're gonna spin right into a shot. Remember, you don't wanna spin 180 degrees, or 360 I should say. I wanna go at angles away from people. I always think of Dirk Nowitzki as a shooter, a great shooter off of a spin move. He had to spin because he's the slowest guy on the floor always, right? Now he's seven foot tall, he could shoot over a mountain, but he always went at a, a, a big angle because he wasn't gonna beat anybody. But a lot of times that quicker defender would beat him to the spot. He knows that's gonna happen because everybody's quicker than him. He's gonna spin away and get into a shot. So you're gonna see us do that. We'll start with a live dribble. We'll take one or two dribbles towards the middle, hard pound, spin into a shot. I'll add a couple fadeaways at the end there as well. All right, here we go, brother. That's doing me no good.
Okay, so let me, I want to be really clear here. Hey, Coach Ryan's teaching me to fade away and kick one leg up. No, I'm not. <laughs> I had a kid in the gym one time catch and shoot 15 feet, going like this, and kicking his leg up. There's no need to do it on a normal shot. There is a good reason to do it if you're fading away. Two things. It kind of counterbalances you, right? Your body's leaning back, so that foot out balances you a little bit. It also, you see a lot of NBA guys do it because it keeps the defender a little bit further away. I'm only demonstrating it as a higher level thing. Most of us aren't higher level shooters. You have to add that to your game as you go. And certainly not if I don't need to do it. It's, it makes the shot more difficult. But you see a guy like Steve Nash in the NBA years ago, and he's my side, a little taller maybe. He had to do it. He's a great, he's as fundamentally sound as there ever has been a shooter, one of the greatest shooters of all time. But he had to throw that into his game to, to get the ball up and over seven foot guys. Six, six guards with six, 10 wingspans. If you don't need to, you don't, don't do it. But it might be something you add to your game. Okay, hopefully that's clear. All right. Okay, next set. We're gonna go spin, up and under. Spin, up and under. So you're gonna do the same spin move you just did. Spin, big ball fake. Defender flies by at an angle. I'm not doing this if the defender's straight in my face. They're kind of flying by at an angle. And now I'm stepping through and shooting. We're gonna actually shoot it. Now I know, see if you can see me here. I know if I spin like this, okay, I'm allowed to take that step. I just never learned that. It, I, I'm pretty sure it used to be a travel back in my day. So um, I'm not gonna do it because it just feels horrible for me and I think it's a travel. I know it's not now, but in my years of learning basketball, it just always would have felt like it. So I'm gonna jump off two feet. Again, it's not a travel. I've asked 100 referees and they've clarified it is not a travel. But you're gonna see us go up and then we're gonna kind of step through and jump off of two feet. And again, the key on this, footwork might not be perfect, but I'm gonna be really good up top. Okay, here we go.
you could tell I was, I think it was 0 for 4 to start. Was it something I did a lot of as a player? No. Is it something we teach? For sure. We teach that a lot. That up and under, because especially you place against somebody you know, likes to block shots. It's part of their game. Maybe they're a lot bigger than you, you're smaller. They just think, hey, here's my chance. Even if they're not real big, if you're small, they're thinking, I'm gonna get my blocks this game. I'm gonna get a couple blocks. Shot fake, shot fake, shot fake. Get them up in here. All right. This is terrible, by the way. You know? Really? Oh my gosh. What is it? Like, it's Jolly Rancher. So it tastes like a, a 16 ounce Jolly Rancher. Oh. All right. So we went spin, up and under. Now we're gonna go fake spin and do a shot. So we're gonna fake the spin, try to keep that ball fairly protected. You might open it up and expose it a little bit as long as it comes back quickly. We're gonna go fake spin. I like to make sure that we drop the shoulder on this. Okay, I don't wanna short change it. I wanna drop that shoulder, make it look like I'm going. Again, the last bit of this, I'll start adding a fadeaway. Okay, great time to do that. You see again, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, all these amazing scores, because everybody's guarding them so tight, they had to add these things to their games. Okay, here we go. Take in and do a shot.
now imagining I get a defender. Get a break. <sighs> Stuff makes you more thirsty than when you drink it. That was our fourth set. Yep. So now, fake spin, up and under. So there's a lot of stuff to do to get a shot. Again, this is kind of more advanced stuff. If you're young and you're doing these drills, you know, to just take it slow, take it close to the rim. We're gonna go fake spin, up, under, okay? All right, here we go.
It's a hard move. A lot going on there. All right, come on. All right. Last set. Again, feel free to make these longer if you want, shorter, whatever works. It's your game. You decide how good you're going to be. Um, last one is the Kobe Bryant move. The, the nice thing about it is it's not a Kobe Bryant move. Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest athletes to ever play the game athletically, but he had this great shot fake when he got in traffic and got kind of close to people. So we're gonna fake spin and let's imagine it didn't work. He's still right there. And you see highlights of Kobe and he would fake spin or fully spin and then just throw this huge shot fake in there. I mean, all the way up, his body would actually come up and the guy would just jump. And then as the guy was back on his way down, Kobe would just gather and shoot a nice <laughs> shot over a guy who's helpless on his way down to the floor. So it just takes a lot of patience. Most people want to fake and then go. He would throw this big fake in there. Sometimes do it twice. Eventually they're gonna go. While they're on their way down, he's up and shooting. So we're gonna fake spin, big patient shot fake, and then a normal shot. Okay, here we go, finish strong. Tell I'm trying to put a lot of arc on it. <laughs> I don't want to put too much arc on it.
now, just in case as I get up, I don't feel like I've got enough separation, I'll pull back. workout guys again if, if your shot doesn't have to be made harder don't do it sometimes it's just got to be a harder shot because you're you're advancing in levels and everybody else is too now I'm gonna leave you with this the best thing I did when it came to fishing yesterday one something I did on the river is actually something I did the day before I called my buddy uh, Tim Landwehr that runs tight lines fly fishing in here appear and De Pere here a little plug for Tim uh, great guy great business support him and I said Tim I'm going down to the driftless area Give me 20 flies that I have to have if I'm going to fish well. He hooked me up. I didn't, I had no questions asked. He just gave me the box, paid for it, good to go. I get to the river. Fish are going crazy. There's this little kind of grayish mayfly kind of thing in, in the, that, that they're eating. I look in all the boxes that I had, the flies I had, don't have it. I look in the, the little box that Tim gave me, got a bunch of them. <laughs> and I had a day because of the expertise of somebody who knew better than me. Think about yourself when it comes to shooting, basketball, life. Who are you getting knowledge, wisdom, insight, encouragement from? Find somebody who knows more than you, better than you. Find multiple people, find mentors, ask them questions. Let them pour their knowledge into you. I know that, that worked for me yesterday on the river. It's worked for me in life. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow.